as we launch into verses 18 following, having spent two sessions on verse 17, I simply want to take a short lab session on Paul's tears. Brothers, join in imitating me and keep your eyes on those who walk according to the example that you have in us because, and then the first thing he does is in verses 18 and 19, draw attention to the negative uh, side of things that he doesn't want to imitate, and then he gets to the positive. But let's just look at verse 18, the tears. For many, not a few, many of whom I have often told you. So when he was with them, he must have returned to this topic often. He hasn't written many letters to them, but he was there. And he he evidently circled back and said often, I often told you, and now I'm telling you, even with tears, walk. Many walk. Many walk as enemies of the cross of Christ. So these tears are owing to the fact that there are many who are walking as enemies of the cross of Christ, suggesting to me that one Christ is shamed, brought into disrepute by this Enmity and too many are perishing. That's what this word destruction implies here. Their end is destruction. So Paul's grief of tears here flows from the belittling of Christ and the perishing of people. And I want us to just to linger for a moment over the emotional implications of this, because I would love to be like this more myself, and, and I would like you to be more like this. Paul is, as he writes or dictates this letter, tears are coming to his eyes. That's what he says. Many of whom I have told you often, and now, as I write this, I'm crying. And yet, in the next breath, he's going to say, they're going to be destroyed. He's going to say their God is their belly, and he's going to say they glory in their shame. Now, in the abstract, we might think pointing out their destruction, pointing out that they they have made a God out of their appetites, and pointing out that they glory in their shame would be spoken with a kind of derision or harshness. And Paul explicitly says... That's not the way you should hear these words. I think that's very important for us to feel. We must say things like this. We must. If we we turn soft and think that tears make truth soft, we don't get it. Tears don't make truth go away. The truth is hard here. Their end is destruction. Their God is their belly. They boast and glory in their shame. These are ugly and horrible features of these people. And they would be offended to hear Paul say it, whether he's crying or not. And that's the world we live in today. It doesn't matter how many tears you shared, shed or how much love you feel for people. If you say things like this about people... Your tears won't mean anything, but they do mean something to God. So that's the main thing I want us to see. Tears do not um, mean that our emotions have become so sentimental that we can't speak the truth anymore about the destruction coming upon people and the fact that they make a God out of their appetites and the fact that they boast in their shame, which they do so often today. Now, this was learned by Paul from Jesus, wasn't it? Remember this story in Mark 3, 1 to 6? He entered the synagogue, and a man was there with a withered hand, and they watched Jesus to see whether he would heal him on the Sabbath so that they might accuse him. And he said to the man with the withered hand, Come here. And he said to them, 
Is it lawful on the Sabbath to do good or to do harm? To save life or to kill? And they were silent. Oh, that, that's not good. You can't even say life is better, saving life is better than killing, doing good is better than doing harm. You can't even answer these questions. And he looked around at them with anger, grieved at their hardness of heart. I remember the first time that dawned on me because those two emotions seldom go together in my life and I want them to, right? We want them to. It's not good if anger takes over our emotions and kills our compassion, our grief over this kind of horrific hardness that they feel towards this suffering man. So Jesus was angry and grieved. And so when you, when you go back and you look at this juxtaposition here of tears with words like, they're going to hell. They've made a God out of their appetites. They're boasting and glorying in their shame. Jesus himself did that. He put that together. Luke 19, and when he drew near and saw the city, he wept over it, saying, would that you, even you, had known on this day the things that make for peace, but now they are hidden from your eyes. So in the providence of God, they can't see, and their blindness means that they won't know peace with God, and therefore it is sad. They're going to perish. Their God is their belly. They glory in their shame, and Jesus weeps just like Paul weeps. And this isn't the only place, is it, where Paul weeps. Here's Romans 9. I am speaking the truth in Christ. I'm not lying. My conscience bears me witness in the Holy Spirit that I have great sorrow and unceasing anguish. That's an incredible phrase. Great, not small, unceasing, not temporary anguish in my heart. For I could wish that I myself were accursed and cut off from Christ for the sake of my brothers, my kinsmen, according to the flesh. They are cut off from Christ. They are perishing. And if Paul could, he says, I would be accursed for them. I can't. God hasn't set up the world that way. And therefore, I grieve with great sorrow at their lostness. Same thing in Acts 20. From among your own selves will arise men speaking twisted things to draw away the disciples after them. Therefore, be alert, remembering that for three years I did not cease night and day to admonish everyone with tears. Isn't that amazing? What a man. Day after day, he admonished them, exhorted them, pleaded with them, and came to tears many, many times. One more. 2 Corinthians 2, 4, I wrote to you out of much affliction and anguish of heart with many tears, not to cause you pain, but to let you know the abundant love that I have for you. So, brothers and sisters, let's, let's watch Paul's emotions because he has learned well from Christ and we should imitate him here, right? He weeps as he says they're going to hell. He weeps as he says their God is their belly. He weeps as he says they glory in their shame. We must say these things to our culture and to hypocritical Christians, but let us say them the way Paul did.